Carpenter, who put out college football's top 25 quarterbacks a few months back. Has that changed at all now that we know that Taysom Hill is healthy? College football writer for the Sporting News is on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Bill, welcome back to the show. Hey, guys, thank you so much for having me on. Just sent my little my daughter down for a nap, so this is the perfect time to talk. Okay, nice. you take care of the kids. <laughs> Make sure they're taking a nap and do a little sports talk. I like that. You released your top 25 college QBs earlier this year, ranking Taysom Hill of BYU at number 22. And you said, well, it depends on if he's healthy. Kind of, It was a tough one to juggle there. Well, he says he's healthy, and his quarterback's coach and offense coordinator Ty Detmer says he's healthy, 100% in fact. So does that change your ranking of Taysom Hill? I mean, it would bump him up if he can prove that he's on the – field healthy i know a couple weeks ago i was watching a little bit of the nebraska game from last year and he just jumps off the the page or see him running around doing the things that you remember that he can do but as you guys couched it before with that twitter question if he stays healthy and and he's one that you really have to ask that question about because when i did those rankings it was kind of waffling between is he going to be the guy that tanner mangum and that's still a question from what i've read yeah it, it definitely is i mean it's 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 still up in the air uh, for us as fans, and, and we know that there's a, a healthy competition. And, I mean, we're excited about it. It's, 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 it can do nothing but bring uh, positives, right, not really negatives. Uh, but uh, um, when, when you talk about Tanner Mangum, where do you think that he fits in uh, among all college quarterbacks? I mean, if you look at the numbers last year, the ability to make plays, the touchdown passes, and the experience, that's, that's why BYU is in that class with one of those, they always say, a nice problem to have for Ty Detmer. And I know when I did those rankings as well, it was BYU. Baylor at the time had still had Stidham. He's transferred since, so it's Seth Russell. But I think of those two independents, BYU and Notre Dame, I mean, they've got the most intriguing quarterback question. Heading in, because you know both Mangum and Hill can play, and just like with Notre Dame, you know Kaiser and Zaire can play. So, I mean, those are two situations I'll be watching really closely in week one. Whoever Ty Detmer puts on the field in week number one against Arizona, BYU fans are confident that that is a high-quality quarterback. Now, earlier in the show, we looked at the other quarterbacks BYU will take on in your top 25 list, starting with Anu Solomon of Arizona on September 3rd and then moving to Josh Rosen later in September, BYU's home opener against UCLA. Of all of the quarterbacks that BYU will face on the 2016 schedule, according to your rankings, who do you think finishes the year with the most impressive season? I think it's going to be Josh Rosen. That's a guy that BYU obviously saw last year as he was a freshman. Um, there's a lot of people that feel he, he could be a – I was one of them last year too. That he kind of looks like long-term the best pro, prospect in the FBS. That's how good his arm is. Um, and they're going to see a pretty good one. He's not on there now, but when they go to Michigan State and Tyler O'Connor settles in as a starter for the spring, you're going to see a lot of, you know, not, not Kirk Cousins right now, but young Kirk Cousins. He's got that feel about him, and I think he's one of those mistake-free quarterbacks that the Spartans use. So those are two guys that jump out. And, of course, you know, Rippon and Keel in that back-to-back road game for BYU, that's going to be a tough stretch there in late October, early November. Bill, um, on, on this list, who do you think is the highest-ranked uh, quarterback for the, for the NFL draft uh, for this upcoming season? Is it Rosen? Does it have to be Rosen? I mean, it has to be. I, yeah, I mean, I was one of the guys, and I was guilty of just like anybody else. After watching him against Virginia last year, I assumed there's never going to be a problem. He's the greatest quarterback I've ever seen. Uh, you know, that type of deal on Twitter. You can fall into that on Twitter, by the way, every once in a while. But uh, yep. I think he's really got the tools. I think he'll learn as a sophomore. And UCLA's got a lot on the line, too, this year. So I think he's going to need to step up and be that guy that they need him to be. Bill Bender of the Sporting News, college football writer, joining us on BYU Sports Nation. You may have heard uh, over the last, like, 10 years or so that uh, the Big 12 is looking at expansion. In fact, you wrote an article on that earlier this week stating it should be down to BYU, Cincinnati, and Houston. Why those three as the Big 12's top expansion candidates? I think they just make the most sense. Um, you know, I've written a lot about Big 12 expansion, I'm sure, like any other writer, and, and theorized and kind of poked at who it should be. I mean, and I, I believe we talked about this last year at this time. I, BYU has that cross combination. It's not just football. It's not just the fact that they won that national championship in my lifetime, referenced before I came on. And then, 
you know, they get to the NCAA tournament all the time. I think they're just the best cross brand. And uh, that's why they're a good candidate. But the problem is all three of these schools are good candidates. I think Houston with the proximity, with the way Tom Herman's coaching them up, they're going to be around for a while and they're, and they're very good. That'll depend on the Texas schools. And then, you know, I, full disclosure, I'm an Ohio kid. I would like to see Cincinnati get there, do a little bit. They, they've played in seven football conferences. I mean, they, they need to find a permanent home, and they're kind of like BYU with the cross between football and basketball. So, so Bill, if, if these are the, the three best schools, does it make sense for the Big 12 to go and grab another that may not have the, the, the quality as these three just to, to grab them all? Well, that's that's the big question. It's either, are they going to go with two and take two of these three and leave one out that that probably fits, or are they going to grab that extra four? Which, you know, you know that list of eighteen schools. It's like it's like a dance line. There's so many teams <laughs> that want to get in, and and with with good reason. You got to be part of the Power Five these days. So if they go to four, I think it that could make sense as well. But at the end of the day, when the Big Twelve looks at this, and, and I, I wrote that in the article as well, they're going to see that they used to have Texas A&M, Colorado, Nebraska, and Missouri. And I'm not sure that the four schools they bring in will look like that. But on the flip side, I'm not so sure that those four schools, in some ways, wouldn't want to be back in the Big 12 if they could, although that won't happen. Can BYU and Cincinnati or BYU and Houston or Cincinnati and Houston even be – because I'm looking at the status of Missouri and Colorado right now and where they are with their football and basketball programs – could Cincinnati and BYU and Houston not replicate what those two schools did in the Big 12? Well, I mean, I think they could do the same. I, I think, uh, you know, you look Colorado back in the 90s, different story. I mean, they were a national championship contender. Sure. They, they did that. But, I, again, I, I point to that cross combination. I mean, BYU's probably, what is it? You guys know this stat probably. 29 appearances in the tournament, no Final Fours. I mean, they're that school that just needs that Final Four appearance. So, and they've, like I said, won a national championship, won big. And the thing I'll point to again is, you know, with this schedule this year, I, I think it's 10 bowl teams, 10 teams that played in a bowl last year. That that's What else do you need to do to prove yourself? Yeah, de- yeah, definitely. Bill, if, if, if you had to choose two out of the three, so you, you are the final decision maker, um, you can't go with four, you guys have to go with two, who would you choose out of those three? <laughs> that's the hardest part for me. Like the article, I kind of – I, you know, I, I gave a non-answer because I, I do believe all three are, are very good fits. I, I think what it comes down to, I think BYU is definitely the fit, and then it comes down to one of Cincinnati, and that's going to be on the Big 12 to decide, do you want another Texas school? Do you want to keep Tom Herman around the conference? Why, why would you let Tom Herman go to an SEC or a Big 10 school? I mean, he's that big time of a coach. I really believe that. And then – Cincinnati, obviously, the Ohio footprint, putting them in the conference, very similar to BYU. So I would say BYU, I mean, impressed for an answer, probably Houston, but I think Cincinnati is every bit as deserving. Bill, we'll finish with this. When will the Big 12 expand, if at all? (laughs) I think this year. I think it's coming. I just don't know when. I mean, and I hope they make the announcement before the season because this is one of those deals – that if we're sitting there in the middle of October and then they, they just throw it out probably the week before the first playoff rankings and then we're all sitting there like scrambling around trying to wonder what the effects on the uh, American Athletic Conference, the effects on Conference USA will be, I don't want to do that in the middle of the playoff race. So I hope they do this before the season so we have some sort of plan of what's going on forward, and I'm sure those schools do too. I'm with you, man. Don't distract from the actual football. Right. Let's enjoy the actual football. Don't be selfish. And leave the off-the-field issues off the field. Bill, great to talk to you, man. We appreciate the time. Anytime, guys. Appreciate it. Check out SportingNews.com. You got it, my friend.